Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lurgan111, and today I want to show off just some things that I've been playing around with a little bit with the new commands and advancement stuff that is in Minecraft Snapshots. I'm currently still playing in 17 week 18b in the new snapshots for a Minecraft 1.12. Uh, but what I have here is just a fun little painting program. And so basically I have different brushes I can select and so, for example, if I want to draw a smiley face like this, I can do something like that, and it looks cute and great. And if I want a thinner line brush or whatever, I can use this one that's the carpet. I figure, like, the red wool block looks like a big thick line, and the carpet looks like a thin line. And this isn't all that interesting by itself. Um, I am doing something that's called ray casting. You'll notice that there's this thing where my cursor is pointing, whatever square it's pointing at. It's actually a wither skeleton skull on top of an invisible armor stand that's moving around that ends up being my cursor. And it means I can fly all around and wherever I'm looking at this screen, it'll be pointing at, you know, whatever block my mouse cursor is kind of looking at. And so that allows me to kind of remotely select blocks from distance which is useful for things like a little paint program like this and yeah I just wanted to kind of briefly talk through this is not going to be as interesting or coherent as the previous video that I made but I just wanted to talk through with some other observations that I had while working on little projects like this so this idea of being able to have a cursor that's able to compute what block I'm looking at and just be able to kind of follow my cursor around uh, and see where I'm looking is kind of using a technique called ray casting. And a lot of people have done it in Minecraft before. If you're actually looking for interesting Minecraft videos and you just go search for Minecraft ray casting on YouTube, uh, you will find a number of interesting videos about it, most of which are pretty old from kind of a while back. Um, but basically there are two main ways that you can do ray casting. One is just to have some entities that are basically kind of like flying out from the player and tracing a line in the direction that the player is looking. And that's one of the main ways that a lot of people have done ray casting in the past. And I have never done it that way, or I've never done things with ray casting very much before, mostly because whenever I've been doing command block gadgets or whatever. I don't like using lots of entities typically unless it's going to do something that's really cool and unique and novel that you can't do another way because um, having lots of entities tends not to scale and tends to lag the game. Uh, but there's another way that you can kind of compute, you know, which square on this grid that I'm looking at, and that's just using some math uh, on the screen right now uh, where the mouse cursor is currently highlighting. Basically, there are two numbers that are the number of degrees left or right that I'm looking and the number of degrees down or up that I'm looking. And so as I move down, you will see the second number is going up to like 39.8 there or going up to negative 29.8 there. And as I move my cursor to the left and right, that angle is also changing from, for example, 140.1 degrees over there to minus 138.2 degrees over there. And if we have those angles, uh, those two angles will allow us to compute where we're looking at. If we also know the distance that we are from this particular grid, the distance from the block that we are looking at, uh, or kind of standing in this direction, at that point, it's also just a matter of doing some math, some basic like trigonometry and Pythagorean theorem kind of stuff in order to compute. You know, if I am looking at this angle up and this angle off to the side, and I'm standing this far away from the wall, <laughs> how to compute, you know, how many pixels to the right and up we need to go in order to be looking at the right thing. And so it's just a bunch of math if you do things that way. And not many people have done things that way, although you could also find in some of those ray, case, ray casting Minecraft videos that I mentioned before, you could find other people doing the mathematical computations and doing trig in order to uh, figure things out. And the advantage is you don't need to use entities. The disadvantage is, at least prior to now, using command blocks, it would involve a lot of command block overhead. And so let me try to describe that next. So let me just sketch the gist of why it was inefficient to compute with trigonometry the location where I was looking at, but it's more efficient with command or sorry with advancements now than it used to be with chain command blocks. And so imagine that this chain is a bunch of instructions that is computing where I'm looking at by doing a bunch of math. 
And we're just going to be talking about this in a high level. And so these command blocks are for the most part empty, and I'm just trying to illustrate things at a high level. But we need to do a bit of math in order to measure a few things. And then at some point, we need to compute the tangent of one of the angles, the tangent of phi. Phi and theta tend to be the names for these two angles that I had up on the screen, on the F3 screen before. And then we need to do some more math, and then we need to compute the tangent of the other angle, theta, and then we can finally do some more math and we'll finally have our answer. And so we can think logically of our whole program to do the computation as being involved in a chain like this, where two points along the way include computing the tangent. And that would be straightforward to do in chain command blocks if there actually was a Minecraft command called tan, which allowed you to take the tangent of an angle and kind of like get a result as a floating point number. But there's no such thing as Minecraft in Minecraft commands. There's only integers on the scoreboard, and there isn't a way to do tangents and different things like that. And so basically, if you want to implement something like that, you either end up having a whole series of commands that ends up just being like a tangent table, or there's different mathematical formulas and approximations that you can do on integers in order to compute things like tangents and sines and cosines. And either one of those strategies that you choose to take, rather than it being one command, it's more like a couple hundred commands. And so I'm illustrating it here, not to scale, as imagining that there's five commands that go into computing a tangent. And so if you wanted to make a program like this in Minecraft command blocks with chain commands, and you wanted it to run it in one tick, you'd end up having a program that looks like this, where basically the few hundred command blocks that involve the tangent would end up being part of the chain here, and they would have to be duplicated again as part of the chain over here. Basically trying to call a function or a subroutine more than once in a single chain inside a single tick means that under chain command blocks, you'd end up having to duplicate the entire code for that function every time you're trying to call it in the same tick. With advancements, on the other hand, one of the new features in 112 that enables a number of things to run faster and cause some of the command block revolution that I mentioned in the previous video, with advancements, we can stick to this strategy and basically have this thing just call advancement grant <laughs> tangent the effectively, and then have this one call advancement grant computing the tangent of theta. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the general idea. And you can actually make a function call out to the advancement to run it here. And then the flow of control continues, continuing on with the other bits of computation that you have, and then call that same function again later on inside the same tick by calling it via an advancement. And as a result, you can reuse the same code in two different places in the same tick using advancements, something that you couldn't do without replicating the code using just normal chain command blocks. And so that's another example of where advancements are kind of more powerful than chain command blocks in terms of being able to reuse code in a more modular and efficient fashion in the new snapshots than you could ever do before. So I guess the point of this video is twofold. One is just to let people know that I am alive, and even though I won't have daily videos on the channel, probably for the, I don't know, foreseeable future over the next couple of weeks as I'm just kind of toying around with a lot of ideas that take up a lot of time to toy around with and code up, um, it is the case that I am still working on this stuff and I will show off some interesting things as I discover them. Um, in the particular case of raycasting, like I said, this is something that people have explored a lot in the past. Uh, I think now basically the nature of this problem and a number of other computational problems that people have tackled in Minecraft before, I think the nature of the problem lends itself more now to an advancement solution than to a command block solution. And so I can imagine seeing more people kind of revisit these ideas. People have made, you know, cool weapons where whatever mob you look at immediately catches fire, you know, like a flame or weapon that you could be holding or something like that. Like there's all kinds of things that you can do when you can immediately compute where the player is looking. Um, and so that's a lot of fun. I chose not to make weapons. Instead, I chose to make the, you know, <laughs> friendly little paint program because I don't know, it just seemed like a happier, fun, wholesome kind of thing to make with this type of thing. And it was also, I don't know, very easy to I don't know, explain and demonstrate, uh, and it's kind of immediately obvious. And I can imagine also like turning this into a 
I don't know, a bigger game kind of thing. If you remember, um, Seth Bling had the building game where basically you build different things. You could imagine, I guess there's like draw something or something like is a similar type of game, basically like drawing games where you draw some kind of art and then your friends try to figure out what it is uh, based on a clue, different games like that that you could make. And you could also do fun things like I just have two brushes here. There's like a thin brush and a thick brush for drawing in color. Uh, I actually did have one other brush as well. If people are trying to do their kind of artistic abilities, when people are trying to make beautiful things in Minecraft, it seems one thing that's always popular is bridges. People like making bridges in Minecraft. Uh, and so I was trying to decide uh, what item would be good for a bridge and I decided a fence kind of looks like a bridge and so I do have one other brush here for my little paint program uh, that's the bridges brush and so I can use this to paint around a bit uh, I can paint in very broad strokes with it and as you can see of course it's going to make it very easy for me to paint up some bridges just like that uh, and so there's our bridges um, yeah I'm having fun with Minecraft ideas. I expect I will do some more in the future, but it will make videos be somewhat infrequent in the near term. So I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and hopefully I will see you again soon with some more cool command stuff. Bye-bye.